There is another type of analysis we can do which also adds information and that's called phase analysis. Imagine if you will that the machine is out of balance and we can think about that shaft trying to move in a circular motion and we can think about the vibration it would generate. But think about the machine itself. You know, this is potentially a high-ish speed machine, you know, whatever, just two pole, four pole, six pole motor. Um, all that force translates into movement of the bearing. It moves up and down and side to side with, for example, unbalance. But it moves differently if it's misaligned and it moves differently if there's cocked bearing and other sorts of faults. So that's what phase analysis does. Phase analysis lets us step back and think about what's actually happening to the machine as a whole. What, how is the vibration or how is the fault condition causing the machine to move? And that tells us a lot about the fault. So if we have a spectrum with a 1x peak and or 2x and or 3x, then there's a bunch of fault conditions that come to mind. It could be unbalance of varying types, misalignment, eccentricity, bent shaft, cock bearing, etc, etc. You can see them there. From the spectrum, it isn't always obvious which of these faults it is. Now, if I was dealing with uh, a fan and I knew that dirt sometimes builds up on the blades, dust, you know, whatever product, um, and there was mostly 1x vibration, then I might be right in saying that it's unbalanced. That is the most likely. But do you know the most common reason why balance jobs uh, fail? Because the machine wasn't out of balance in the first place. Someone sees high vibration, oops, that's unbalanced. Even if it's a high 1x peaks up, oh, it's unbalanced. And so the machine has to be stopped, you know, person gets in there, safety issues, you know, all this sort of work, and then they find out you know what's not out of balance, it's misaligned or something else. So phase helps us understand that. Now here is what we call single plane unbalance, static unbalance. The fan is very narrow compared to its diameter. All the unbalance is sort of concentrated if you like in one plane. And what's happening is if you imagine a circular motion that we're looking at from the side, the two ends of the rotor assuming it's supported at both ends, um, are moving up and down together. They are in phase. Uh, instead, if we look at it on a bit of an angle, if we traced out, if you like, the orbit, or if we traced out the motion that that bearing is going through in the way I'm animating it here, that motion would be circular. It wants to move in a circular motion because of the centripetal forces of that out of balance weight. So, that tells us a lot. From here, if we could take a phase reading, we measure vibration here and we measure vibration here and we see whether it's going up together, down together, up together, down together. If we compared the vibration vertically here to horizontal, we would see that they're both going up and down, but there's a quarter of a rotation delay between the two. So if you look at it, it, it comes out to the side, then up to the top, then out the other side, then down the bottom, then this side, up the top, and, and so on. There's a phase timing relation. If we could compare the vibration vertically to the vibration horizontally, we would see 90 degrees phase change. 90 degrees because it's 90 degrees between vertical and horizontal, and it's moving in a circular motion. But you might think, well, wouldn't it always do that? No. With other fault conditions, misalignment for example, just about all of them, it doesn't move in a circular motion. It's very elliptical. It moves in funny ways you wouldn't expect. That's what phase tells you. How's it moving? So we come up with these little diagrams. We say, okay, the little circle and, and the line at the top is sort of like a reference. Rather than writing down the actual phase readings, we just draw it this way. So because the little line's going up in both cases, that means it's in phase because one's going you know, at 12 o'clock and one's at 3 o'clock that means there's a 90 degrees phase change and it confirms unbalance. Here we've got uh, we call it dynamic unbalance. The rotor's longer, the distribution of dirt buildup along the fan is not uniform 
Uh, so therefore, if you like, it's more out of balance in you know, one plane than another. Either way, that is still circular motion, but from one end to the other, it's not in phase like it was just before. So, looking over here, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, that's 90 degrees. By the way, it could be 12 o'clock and 9 o'clock. Depends on the direction of rotation, but it's 90 degrees. But here, I've used you know 12 o'clock as the reference, and here we are at 5 o'clock. Um, that shows that it's not the the pure and simple you know in phase motion of static, and for what it's worth, it's not 180, which would be coupled. Um, phase really helps us to understand not only what's wrong with the machine, but in this instance, how to balance it. If I have an overhung rotor, not only do I get the, the circular motion that we just saw, but we also get a rocking motion. Let's have a look. So I'm not just showing the radial centripetal forces, I'm focusing on just the rocking. And once per revolution it sort of rocks back and forward, if you like, as that overhung rotor bends due to the, or flexes due to the um, uh, out of balance on these blades. So it's still circular motion, so our 90 degree rule applies here and here, but we create axial vibration as well. So we measure that and we look at the phase reading. So this is, you know, we put our sensor axially and see what happens. Now this, this all might be seeming just a little bit complicated, we're diving in the deep end a bit, but hey, look, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 90 degrees. Now that is, what's that? Uh, you know, seven o'clock or something, and so there's 90 degrees between here and here as well. But notice that these ones are not in phase. But when I look axially here compared to here, they are in phase. So bottom line is phase really helps us understand what's going on. The challenge with phase is how you measure it. Now, the simplest way is to have a two-channel analyzer carry that second accelerometer with you because you usually just take single channel measurements on a machine and when you suspect a problem you put for example one sensor on top one sensor on the side and say what's the phase difference at the running speed between these two locations and if it's somewhere around 90 degrees aha now we we take one sensor and put it in the axial direction another sensor and put it in the axial direction here and we say what's the phase difference between these two locations at the running speed Ah, they're pretty much in phase with each other. And so that's all you've got to do. If you don't have a two-channel analyzer, then we used to have to use a timing reference. We often put a piece of reflective tape on the shaft and use a laser tack or photo tack to detect as it passes the uh, detector once per revolution. That tells the analyzer the speed of the machine and then it looks at the vibration from the sensor to look at the timing difference between that once per rev pulse and the sort of the height, the highest point in the time waveform. Anyway, bit of detail there but it's a bit more complicated. You may even have to stop the machine to do the test. That's why a two channel analyzer is, is worth it. Okay, in this instance we've got um, <coughs> offset or parallel misalignment. Now I'm simulating it, we've got the f bolts undone and it's free to move up and down, you know, maybe we're out in space. Um, but of course we're going to bolt the machine down but the forces are still there. So if I put a sensor here and a sensor there, um, they are uh, 180 degrees out of phase, whether I measure them both vertically or measure them both horizontally. With angular misalignment, not that you can see it, ignore that key, not that you can see it, but it's like pushes, pulls, pushes, pulls. We get axial vibration and we see a phase difference between uh, this face and this face. We have to adjust them because we're pointing the sensors in opposite directions, but we will see that 180 degrees phase difference there. Eccentricity, it might look like unbalanced, but when we put the belt on and so on, we see something funny. A vibration reading taken in line with the belts compared to 90 degrees apart, you know, perpendicular to it, those phase readings are often close to one another. They're sort of in phase or they're sort of 180 degrees. When I say sort of, I mean we're not looking for 180.00, just something in that sort of area. Um, it's because it's an elliptical motion and we don't need to go into it all, but that's, that's why we see that. 
And, oh, look, you know, we've got the bearing isn't mounted correctly on the shaft. It's rocking and rolling every time the uh, shaft turns, which is damaging our bearings. But if we compare the phase from here to here to here to here, we see a 90 degrees phase shift because of that rocking motion. Now, yes, we wouldn't take a reading here because we've got belt. I need to come up with a better illustration, but anyway, that's, that's what we've got. Okay, on the other hand, if it's cocked in the, sh in the housing, well, if I was to take a reading here and a reading here, in other words, on either side of the shaft, here compared to here, I would see 180 degrees phase difference and I would see higher amplitude as compared to measuring here and, and on the other side. I might not see any phase relationship or any great amplitude. So with this type of uh, problem, we're going to look at s specific locations. Either way, it's either 180 degrees opposite if, that, if the bearing is cocked in that plane or, or in that plane. It's not 90 degrees as we move around.